Sarah wanted to figure out if she did better on tests by studying two more hours or by sleeping two more hours. She charted, she charted her results for 10 different tests. So this is when she studied two more hours and this is when she slept two more hours. And they ask us, based on the data, should, Sa should Sarah study more or sleep more the night before a test? And so this isn't a huge sample of data, so we won't talk about things like st statistical significance and all of that. But just based on the information we have, let's see if we can have any, draw any at least initial conclusions. So the first thing that we might want to do is, let's just compare studying, studying two hours more, or sleeping two hours more. And let's, let's calculate. Let's calculate some statistics over here. So let's let's think about her. Let's think about her mean test score when she's studying versus when she studies two more hours versus when she sleeps two more hours. So let's think about the mean. So the mean here, we're going to add up all of these and then divide by five. Let me get a calculator out just for do these a little bit quicker. So the mean time when she's studying is going to be 93 plus 72 plus 78, plus 82, plus 82, plus 79, plus 79, and then divide by five. There's five data points here. So her mean score when she studies two hours more is 80.8. So this is 80.8. And what is the mean score on her exams when she sleeps two hours more? When she sleeps two hours more. So 85 plus 89, plus 81, plus 95, plus 86, divided by 5, is 87.2. 87.2. So just looking at that, yeah, she has a higher average, higher mean test score when she sleeps two hours more. Maybe that's because sleep is more important, or maybe it's just she felt more confident going into those exams, so felt like she didn't need to study much. But that's at least a data point. That's why this isn't really a good, a good research. Whenever the experimental subject is the one performing the the actual study, they kind of know what's going to happen. Maybe they know that they have to, they they can, they don't have to study as much for the the exams that are easy, or who knows what they are. But let's just actually calculate. The whole purpose of this is to actually just calculate the different uh, mean, mean, median mode and all the rest. So let's just calculate now the median. Let's calculate the median. So to calculate the median, you want to put all of these in order and then pick out the middle. So if you want to put it in order when she's studying, I'll just write it over here. You have the lowest is 72. Then you have, then after that, you the next lowest is 78. 78. The next lowest is 79. 79, the next lowest is 82, 82, and then you have 93, 93. So the median when she studies two more hours is 79, and the median when she sleeps two more hours, let's see, so I'll put these in order, the lowest here is 81, 81, then we have 85, 85, then you have 86, 86, then you have 89, 89, and then you have 95. So the median here is going to be 86, 86. So once again, this measure of central tendency also says that it looks like she does better on exams when she sleeps two more hours than when she studies two more hours. Once again, to me, that doesn't conclusively say that she should study more or sleep more. That just says that. When, for exams where she happens to sleep more, she happens to do better. But it might go to it might be the exams that she's more confident on. She's willing to study less and then sleep more. Or it might be that sleeping is actually what's helping her on the exam. So we don't know, but at least we know that the median and the mean is higher when she sleeps more. Now let's think about the mode. What's the most common? So the mode. So the mode is the most frequent result. And when she's studying, there is no single most frequent result. If any of these, if she had a 78 twice, then that would have been the mode. But there, all of these scores are unique. So there is no, there is no mode. There is no mode for the studying. And the same thing is true for the sleeping. All of these are unique. If one of these showed up with a higher frequency than the others, then that would be the mode. But there is nothing that shows up more frequently than everything else. Now let's think about the range. And this essentially will tell us how spread apart are these values? What's the difference between the highest and the lowest value? 
So when the studying, the highest value is 93, lowest value is 22, the range, sorry, that's not 22, that's 72. Why did I write 70? This is a 72. Highest value is 93, lowest value is 72. And so the range, the range in this situation is 93 minus 72, which is equal to 21, which is equal to 21. And then the range over here, the range when she sleeps more is 95 minus 81, which is equal to 14. So this doesn't tell us anything about really the central tendency, but it does say that her scores when she sleeps more tend to be less spread around. So one, they tend to be generally higher when we look at some of their central tendency measures, and they also seem to be less spread about. When she studies more, her, her average scores or her median scores tend to be a little bit lower, and the range, there's, it looks like there's more variety in how well she actually does. There's a bigger difference between her highest score and her lowest score. And then finally, let's try to do the mid-range. So the mid-range is just the average of her highest and lowest scores. Put it in green, mid-range. And it's another measure kind of of central tendency. So the mid-range average of highest and lowest scores, so mid-range, mid-range is going to be 93 plus 72 divided by 2. So this is what, 165, 165 over 2, which is 82.5. 82.5, at least in this example, wasn't too far away from the mean or the median. And then the mid-range, when she sleeps more, is going to be, so the mid-range is going to be 95 plus 81, 95 plus 81 over 2. So this is equal to 176 over 2, and that is what? That is 88, that is, is that right? Yep, 80 times 2 is 160, then you have another 16, so that is 88. 88. So I don't know if you could, based on this data, tell Sarah that she could definitely study more or sleep more. I guess they're probably saying, oh, once you look at this, it looks like she does better when she's when she sleeps more. But that by itself, you don't know if she's sleeping more, if the sleep is causing, so you don't know if the sleep is causing her to do better. So that's one theory, and I think that's what the writer of this question was thinking, that some, you know, that this is enough to make a conclusion. But you also don't know, maybe the maybe she the subjects that she knows better. She's willing to study less. She's willing to study less and sleep more. So you actually don't know which way it goes. Is, a, is, is, are, is because you have an easy exam the next night, you're willing to sleep more, and that's why we get these results? Or maybe it is really true that the sleeping more actually makes someone perform better, even when the exams are the same level of difficulty.